Across the sprawling Spider-Verse, there have been many heroes to take the name Spider-Man, but perhaps none have been more enduring or more popular than the sci-fi hero of the future, the Spider-Man of 2099. Miguel O'Hara has been a fan favorite since his debut in the early 90s, returning many times over the years in comic book team-ups, video games, cartoons, and even the movies. So what makes this future web warrior so beloved? Is it his cool costume? the unique dystopian future he comes from, or perhaps is it the endless misery that has been heaped upon this reluctant hero over and over again? What do we love more than a hero who keeps fighting even after things look their darkest? And boy, do things just stay dark for this wall crawler. Miguel O'Hara was a brilliant science whiz, not unlike Peter Parker, the original Spider-Man. He was a high-level researcher working on genetic engineering with animals for a massive mega corporation named Alchemex. His journey towards becoming Spider-Man began during research he was conducting to create a corporate raider for Alchemex that would take secrets from its competition. Inspired by Spider-Man, Miguel was researching how to use spider DNA to create a corporate raider who could climb walls and easily sneak in and out of buildings. Miguel was not exactly the nicest guy, he was arrogant and snarky, making fun of his co-workers and gloating about his superior intelligence and scientific skills. He did not particularly care that Alchemex was responsible responsible for much of the inequality, pollution, and general social damage in the country, and particularly in Nueva York, the New York of 2099. This despite the protest of his younger brother Gabriel, who was much more concerned with the issues and plight of those who live far below the massive skyscrapers of the corporations. Even so, Miguel was not completely heartless, and when he was pressured to rush his experiments and conduct human testing, he protested. He ultimately agreed when a volunteer begged to be part of an experiment rather than be aged 40 years to near death as punishment. But the test failed and created a hideous lumbering monster. It reached out to Miguel as if begging to be put out of its misery before it melted into a pile of goo. Miguel quit Alchemex immediately, horrified by the result. He did not want to be involved in such horrible and inhumane research. In a plot to keep Miguel at Alchemex, the head of the company, Tyler Stone, drugged him with a highly addictive hallucinogen called Rapture. Since Alchemex was the only legal producer of the drug and those addicted die without regular doses, Miguel would be forced to remain with the company. Rapture wasn't just a highly addictive drug, it also bonded with the user's genetics. In order to free himself of his addiction, Miguel tried to use his own research to fix the problem. Having used himself as a source of human genetic data, Miguel had an in-depth record of his genetic code prior to being drugged. He planned to essentially reboot his genes. However, a bitter partner named Aaron Delgado sabotaged the equipment causing an explosion while Miguel was undergoing his treatment. After the explosion, Aaron saw Miguel survive and undergo a horrifying mutation as a result of the spider genetics that Miguel had on file. But before we get too deep into the century spanning time traveling tragic history of Spider-Man 2099, remember to subscribe to Blood Armor Comics for all things Spider-Verse. Horrified by the monstrous change, Aaron tried to kill Miguel but Miguel found he was suddenly fast enough to avoid the bullets. Delgado's reckless gunshots caused another explosion that blew open the wall and left him dangling from the edge. Miguel tried to save Delgado, but as he tried to pull the man up, Delgado screamed in pain as Miguel's hands stuck to his skin and were slowly ripping it away from his wrist. Miguel was still disoriented, so he did not understand the other man's screams. He continued to pull, trying to save Delgado's life until the skin ripped completely off the man's arm and Delgado plunged to his death. That's when O'Hara realized he had been transformed. He saw that his hands had grown talons and he now had sharp fangs in his mouth. When the police arrived, Miguel leapt from the building ready to end it all but the rush of the fall snapped him out of his days. Desperate to somehow survive now that he was facing his imminent demise, he desperately grabbed for the building. His talons on his hands dug into the side of the building, and as he held on for dear life, he discovered that the claws were also on his feet, allowing him to crawl to safety. Miguel returned home to recover and discovered his talons were retractable, although he still had to concentrate hard to keep them retracted. He soon discovered he was being pursued by an elite Alchemex assassin named Venture. The cyborg 
cyborg killer was a merciless force of nature who was unafraid to hurt innocent bystanders to get his quarry. With his cybernetic eye, Venture was able to track Miguel's heat signature to his apartment. To mask his identity, Miguel used a Day of the Dead costume made of unstable molecules that he had worn once as a disguise. Combined with gliding material he had salvaged, Miguel leapt from his apartment to catch the assassin by surprise and keep his identity safe. He led Venture on a chase back and forth across the city through his own apartment to trick the assassin and throw off the trail. Spider-Man found unlikely help from the religious group called the Thorites. The Thorites were a cult who believed Thor had died and would someday return to save the world. Despite the help from his new fans, Venture managed to capture Miguel. As they fought in midair, the assassin grabbed Miguel's arm, which unexpectedly forced him to shoot webs from the top of his wrist. Spider-Man managed to come out the victor with the combination of his newly discovered web power, super strength, and scientific wits, but he was left lost and confused. His fiance Dana believed he was still strong wrung out on the rapture drug, while his brother considered him a corporate stooge who sold his soul to Alchemex. With his physical transformation, including the talons, fangs, and web shooters that he had grown across his whole arm, he didn't know how to hide or what to do next. Miguel was offered his old job at Alchemex, provided that he helped Stone locate Aaron Delgado, whom he believed was the new Spider-Man. Miguel accepted the position and planned to use the Alchemex resources to find a cure for his transformation and to discover what other powers he might develop in the meantime. It was a pretty good plan and also showed that even though he had managed to help a few people, he was not particularly interested in heroics. That began to change as Spider-Man 2099 went on to have various adventures fighting crime downtown. This downtown was the literal bottom rung of society, far below the skyscrapers of the wealthy citizens of Nueva York. Downtown was the original island of Manhattan, living in the shadow of the skyscrapers and flying cars of the elite. In addition to fighting petty crime, he met a few supervillains, including fighting a new vulture who was a cannibalistic cyborg. Like the original Spider-Man, this new Spidey was also pursued by police, but these were a private police force owned by Alchemex. These adventures began to expose Miguel to how desolate a future 2099 really was. American society and government had been completely overtaken by corporations. While much of their technology was more advanced, there were certain sciences and technology that had been lost at the end of the mysterious heroic age, which ended many years ago in an unknown catastrophe. More than a desire to help people, Spider-Man was motivated to sabotage Alchemex, but in doing so, he found himself on the side of the poor and marginalized of downtown who came to view him as a hero of the people. He even inspired copycats who considered him a mystical savior and herald of Thor. Miguel saw being Spider-Man as a chance to do something important and meaningful, a chance to make up for his work at Alchemex. Being Spider-Man opened his eyes to the realities of inequalities and justice. His heroics inspired the masses of downtown to hope for a better life. Even Miguel's own mother, who had so long viewed him as selfish, saw Spider-Man as a hero of the people. Although he never set out to be a hero, Spider-Man took on that role and warned the corporations that Spider-Man would be watching them. This journey of a reluctant hero who slowly learned of his own privilege and realized his responsibility to humanity gave Miguel's early adventures in particular a compelling and emotional element. With his expanded view of the world and its harsh realities, Spider-Man had started to feel guilty when he took the costume off and returned to being Miguel O'Hara living uptown. He felt he was abandoning the people he had grown to care about. His sense of duty slowly came to replace his arrogance, though he often viewed himself as better than many of his opponents and allies. This was often shown in Spider-Man's quips and jokes in battle. Much like the original Spider-Man, Miguel talks a lot, particularly when fighting. But where Peter's banter is frantic and used as a defense mechanism, Miguel's humor is more sarcastic and arrogant. Miguel went on fighting Alchemex and their private enforcers, protecting people from police brutality and unjust punishment with plenty of snide comments. As a result, Spider-Man was a regular fixture downtown. He even learned to use the religious beliefs that had popped up around Spider-Man to his advantage, threatening criminals with heavenly punishment. Spider-Man had fully embraced his role as a hero of the people and protector of the downtrodden. But as the religious worship continued to grow, it took a toll on Miguel. Soon the crowds were asking for blessings and mothers were asking Spider-Man to heal their children. Miguel was uncomfortable with the reverence and recognized that he was not able to give them what they needed. Being a superhero is always a lonely job and this new Spider-Man was feeling isolated from everyone he knew. 
Even putting on the costume did not give him an emotional escape once the worship began. These weren't exactly the problems that faced the original Peter Parker, who grew up poor and was always broke. Instead of worship, he was just a wall-crawling menace feared by the public. Kinda makes Miguel look a little selfish, feeling sorry that life was in a way a little too good. Miguel was not completely alone, though. He was aided in his mission by Lila, a holographic robot assistant. Think Siri or Alexa if they were able to create a projection that looked like Marilyn Monroe. Lila slowly began to reveal she was more than just a basic AI and often engaged in playful banter with Miguel as she developed a personality. But she soon developed emotions that overwhelmed her and even caused her to briefly turn evil. Ah, but not to worry, she got better. Later, while Miguel was a time-hopping hero trapped in the past, Lila became a portable assistant, not just confined to Miguel's apartment. She was first housed in Miguel's watch and eventually became an onboard computer for his upgraded Parker Industries costume. Lila always tried her best to be helpful, but her misunderstanding of basic human social cues usually ended up with badly timed jokes or generally embarrassing behavior. Miguel and his fiance, as guests of Alchemex, were invited to the new technological marvel that was the floating skyscraper called Valhalla. When they arrived for the opening ceremony, a great roar came from the sky, shaking all of Valhalla. From above descended a golden-haired figure claiming to be Thor, wielding a hammer and joined by another who claimed to be the god Heimdall. This Thor announced himself as the original god of thunder reborn and spoke words of warning against false prophets and heralds. Miguel was a bit stressed out about that last part given his recent reputation. Thor tried to take Dana as a prize and when Miguel stood up to the supposed god, he was lobbed through the air like a ragdoll. Dana was horrified, thinking Miguel was dead. Thor demanded the mortals leave Valhalla so the gods could inhabit it. In the meantime, Miguel had put on his costume to stand up to Thor and protect Donna. Learning that everyone had already left, Spider-Man decided it was no longer his problem and turned to go, but Thor and Heimdall attacked, calling him a false prophet. Spidey managed to cut Thor's cheek with Heimdall's sword. Thor was furious and unleashed a fury worthy of the god he claimed to be, proving himself massively powerful and sending Miguel flying through the air with the strength of his hammer. Spider-Man awoke from his hammer and due Snap to the Punisher 2099 holding a gun up to his head. They managed to convince each other they were mutual enemies of Valhalla and flew up to stop the gods on Punisher's hoverbike. But they were not the only heroes out to stop this new Thor. The X-Men of 2099 and a new hero named Ravage had discovered that Valhalla's technology was causing massive environmental damage and had converged on Valhalla along with Doctor Doom who used his magic and technology to survive into the future and become a hero to put a stop to the floating ecological disaster. All the while, Thor was growing in reputation as many Thorites celebrated the return of their savior. His strength and feats were enough to convince many that the gods had truly returned. In reality, however, it was a plot by the evil CEO of the Alchemex Corporation who sought to use these engineered gods to wipe out this new batch of superheroes who were giving people too much hope and inspiring them to seek to better their lives. By convincing the people that the real gods had returned, he would show them that the heroes like Spider-Man were tricksters and frauds. Thor and the returned Norse gods would be the new champions and be worshipped by the masses, meaning Alchemex would then have control of an entire religion. The heroes of 2099 I now all gathered on Valhalla team up to stop Alchemex and its dangerous plot. Together with the Punisher, Miguel bought time for Doom and Ravage to hack into Valhalla's systems and adjust the anti-gravity system so they would no longer jeopardize the environment below. Just as they did so, Thor attacked and brought the floating city crashing down toward Nueva York. Doom instructed Miguel and Punisher that Thor's hammer could re-energize the city and keep it from falling. With Spider-Man's help, Punisher was able to get the hammer and hurl it into the heart of Thor's storm, thus ending the electrical interference and stabilizing Valhalla. With Valhalla neutralized and the gods defeated, Spider-Man returned to downtown where he had to decide how to continue on his Spider-Man and make a difference without the religion that had popped up around him. It was a new chapter in his life that seemed like it might be a little less complicated. Clearly, he was still new to the whole superhero thing because things would only get worse for him and become more confusing with all the time travel to come. Shortly after the Valhalla adventure, Miguel discovered that Alchemex had attacked his brother Gabriel and nearly killed him. Furious, he tracked down Tyler Stone at his mansion and was ready to murder the man. But when he arrived, he stumbled upon his mother in conversation with Stone where he overheard two shocking revelations. Number one, Stone had never 
never really drugged Miguel, meaning the experiment that transformed him was not necessary, and he could have lived a normal life. Number two, Tyler Stone was his real father, not the abusive, negligent George O'Hara. These two facts completely rocked Miguel's world, and to deal with them, he left Nueva York. He pushed aside his fiance Dana and went on a road trip with his ex-girlfriend Zena. This adventure took him to a town free of corporate influence, Route 66, and Mexico City for the Day of the Dead, where he met Strange 2099, a young Mexican woman who was the new Sorcerer Supreme. Miguel no longer knew who he was or if his life had any great purpose. Just as he had started to get a handle on being Spider-Man and how to balance it with his civilian life, these newfound revelations hit particularly hard. If the reason he had gained his powers was some kind of cosmic mix-up, then why did he have them at all? Miguel's road trip of self-discovery was cut short when he was abducted by government officials who took him to the White House at the request of Tyler Stone. At the White House, Miguel was introduced to the new president of the United States, none other than Dr. Doom. Under Doom, the corporations that ran society were consolidated, with Stone in charge. Stone recommended Miguel to run Alchemex, the company he had waged war on as Spider-Man and was responsible for so much of his troubles. He couldn't help himself but laugh at the absurdity and irony of this proposal. Miguel eventually accepted the offer with the belief he could make a positive change with Alchemix's resources, but before he could get started, he had to deal with Venom, the original symbiote with a new host and mutated powers. After several fights with Spider-Man, Venom attacked Miguel at Alchemix and threatened his ex fiance and his girlfriend, Xena. As the fight raged across the city, the police attempted to subdue Venom despite Spider-Man's warnings. Venom's ability allowed their bullets to pass right through his body. With the police ignoring Spider-Man's protest, Dana was caught by stray gunfire and killed as Miguel watched helplessly. After so much upheaval in his life, Miguel went off the deep end, using Alchemex resources to discover a weakness in Venom. When they discovered he was sensitive to sound, Spider-Man went on a hunt and viciously beat Venom in a rage. As the sound vibration caused the symbiote to break down, Miguel was shocked to find that there was a human beneath the alien. It temporarily snapped him out of his rage, but when he tried to muster up the courage to kill Venom, he discovered who the symbiote's host was, Kron Stone, Miguel's half-brother and childhood bully. Venom was taken to Alchemix for study, but though he had managed to stop the villain, Dana's death had permanently changed Miguel. The original Spider-Man has been no stranger to tragedy throughout his long career, but Spider-Man 2099 would go on to be defined by a seemingly endless string of losses that pushed him to the edge time and time again and turned Miguel into a much darker character than his predecessor. A new enemy soon took advantage of Spider-Man's distress. Still reeling from his failure to save Dana, Spider-Man was targeted by Goblin 2099. This new version of the Green Goblin sought to expose Spider-Man as a fraud and used powers of illusion to trick Spider-Man into seeing civilians as copies of the Goblin. Miguel believed he was attacking goblins, but images of the assault showed Spider-Man beating innocent bystanders. With these images made public, the people of downtown that Spider-Man swore to protect turned on him. Hard to blame them, really. Things seem to be just getting worse for Miguel, who is now faced with an identity crisis both in costume and out. If downtown no longer wanted him around, what was Spider-Man to do? Spidey began to think that maybe trying to do the right thing wasn't worth all this pain, and he should instead capitalize on his power. Things were only getting darker, with theorites beginning to murder the Spider-Man worshippers who dressed up in his costume. The Thorites believed Spider-Man had betrayed them and was now just a corporate tool of Alchemex. When Spider-Man tried to rescue one of the men dressed in his costume, he discovered it was the first person who ever saw Spider-Man and had started the Spider-Rite worshippers. It was yet another blow to Miguel's belief in himself and his mission. While attending Dana's funeral, Miguel ran into the deceased man's wife, who said that her husband never stopped believing that Spider-Man would help make a better world, even after everyone else bought into Goblin's tricks. This galvanized Miguel, who then went on to refuse Tyler Stone's attempt to take Alchemix back. Instead, Miguel renewed his mission to use the corporation for public good. But Spider-Man's personal problems were soon brushed aside as major cataclysms struck the world of 2099. Spider-Man found himself dealing with an uprising from Atlantis and the melting of the polar ice caps which completely flooded downtown, drowning scores of people. 
The environmental catastrophe was the result of an invasion by the technologically advanced alien race known as the Phalanx. Their invasion effectively decimated the entire planet, leaving it flooded and the heroes of the era desperately trying to keep society moving forward. Society was eventually able to rebuild once the Phalanx threat was dealt with. But it would later be revealed that Miguel had quite a few more adventures in his past thanks to some constant time traveler shenanigans that would ping pong him back and forth between past and future. With his genetic structure 50% spider as a result of the accident at Alchemex, the Spider-Man of 2099 has enhanced strength and agility just like the original. However, unlike Peter Parker, Miguel's webbing is organic, not mechanical web shooters, and he has spinnerets running along his forearm that release webbing from the tops of his wrists. Much like his predecessor, Spider-Man 2099 can cling to walls but does so using sharp talons on his hands and feet, not general adhesive stickiness like the original Spider-Man. These claws are extremely sharp and durable, able to cut through metal and skin with ease. Another difference in Spider-Man 2099's power set was his lack of Parker's spider sense. Instead, Miguel had enhanced vision and hearing that gave him similar advantages. This supervision was similar to Superman's microscopic vision, allowing him to see great distances. He could also see in complete darkness. His enhanced vision causes him to be extremely light sensitive, however, which requires him to wear tinted glasses to avoid being blinded in normal lighting conditions, which he at first thought was a side effect of the rapture drug. His eyes are also an inhuman red tint. Miguel possessed fangs with venom glands that could release a toxin to paralyze his enemies. Unlike the talons on his hands and feet, Miguel could not retract his fangs and rarely opened his mouth fully or smiled clearly. As a result, he was often accused of mumbling. The original Black Spider-Man 2099 suit was made of unstable molecules, a technology created by Mr. Fantastic. The fabric is nearly indestructible and can change shape along with its wearer. Meaning when Spider-Man releases his claws, the suit moves with him and does not rip. He also has a web-like cape that allows him to glide short distances. Miguel is a brilliant genetic scientist and is generally extremely intelligent, allowing him to outsmart many of his opponents. However, even though he was brilliant and came from a technologically advanced future, Miguel was no tech genius like Peter Parker and never outfitted himself with any gadgets or upgrades, relying instead on his reflexes and straightforward brawler style of fighting. When his suit was updated by Parker Industries, he had Lila integrated into the helmet as an onboard computer that let him scan enemies and track them on the internet. This let him know if someone was trying to lie to him through monitoring their vital signs. He also had other tools like tracking heat signatures. The new suit also included thrusters in his boot that not him not just glide but fly for short periods of time. The white suit was more heavily armored and concealed various gadgets within. The new outfit came just in time as Miguel found himself bouncing back and forth through time more than ever. At some point between when he discovered Tyler Stone was his father and before Doom's presidency, Miguel was displaced in time and ended up in the main Marvel Universe where he encountered the superior Spider-Man. Dr. Octopus had taken over Peter Parker's body in order to prove that his superior intellect would make him a more effective superhero. Miguel noticed something strange was up with Spider-Man. The two had met briefly once before in a cross timekeeper that caused the two to swap places. In that first adventure, Miguel woke up in a bed next to Mary Jane Watson while Peter was lost in New York City 2099. The two had been caught up in a battle between Spider-Man and Hobgoblin of 2211. Their time together was short, but it was enough time for Miguel to realize Spidey his new rougher attitude was out of character. Miguel ended up in the present day after investigating time distortions at Alchemax. Trying to determine the cause, Spider-Man fought through World War I-era airplanes and dinosaurs to get into the Alchemax HQ. Miguel believed that they were responsible for the problems with the space-time continuum, but in fact they were trying to put things right. When Miguel discovered that his father Tyler Stone was slowly being ripped out of the time stream, Miguel stepped into the distortions to ensure his own existence and solve things at the source, the Age of Heroes. Octavius was at the time working at a cutting edge technology company called Horizon Labs. In a bid for corporate takeover, Tyler Stone's father Tiberius Stone had seized Horizon's assets which threatened Octavius' goals of scientific dominance. As Spider-Man, he chased down Stone and violently threatened him, only to be stopped by the arrival of Spider-Man 2099. 
So to recap, two Spider-Men, neither one is Peter Parker, but one is secretly the supervillain, Dr. Octopus. When Superior Spidey didn't recognize Miguel from their first team-up, Miguel stopped trying to reason with Octavius, grabbed Stone, and left. Getting distance from the other Spider-Man began to set things right back in the future. But Miguel started to think that maybe just putting the future back to the way it was before might not be for the best, especially considering with its evil mega corporations and the problems they still cause. Miguel called up his partner personal assistant Lila on his watch and began researching Horizon Labs and its connection to Alchemax. Lila discovered that it was Tiberius Stone's destruction of Horizon Labs that eventually led to the rise of Alchemax, a destruction scheduled for that very day. Talk about convenient. Miguel quickly traveled to Horizon Labs to rescue its people but was promptly decked in the face by the superior Spider-Man, making things a little more complicated. With Miguel unconscious, Otto and the scientists at Horizon were unable to stop the coming explosion and 2099 began to unravel. After regaining consciousness and with no time to put his original plan into motion, Miguel risked a last desperate act. He grabbed Tiberius Stone so that he would perish with the rest of them. It would mean sacrificing his own existence, but Miguel was willing to do it to make the future a better place without Stone or Alchemax. But Miguel was not able to go through with it, and in the final moment saved Stone's life, setting the future back to the way it was. Back in 2099 and fully recovered, Tyler Stone destroyed the time travel device and stranded Miguel in the present. He should have seen it coming. Stranded though he was, Miguel was not about to stop fighting for 2099. He would end up going undercover in Alchemax under the guise of Michael O'Mara. When Norman Osborn took over the criminal underworld as the Goblin King, Octavarius sacrificed himself to return Peter Parker's mind to its rightful body. Together with the original Spider-Man again, Miguel helped defeat Osborn and his Goblin army. After using Lila to choose the right lottery numbers for some quick cash, Miguel moved into a crummy New York City apartment where he met a woman named Tempest. He continued working at Alchemix as his grandfather's assistant and even seemed to be making some positive change, managing to convince Stone not to sell his Spider Slayer tech to a dictator. Things started falling apart, a common theme in Miguel's life when the vampiric inheritors led by Peter Parker's dangerous enemy Morlan were killing and feeding off of the energy of Spider-Man and women throughout the entire multiverse. When an alternate version of Miguel, who had traveled the multiverse with the ragtag group of heroes known as the Exiles, tried to reach out to his counterpart in the main Marvel Universe, our Miguel witnessed Moreland murder his double through an interdimensional portal. The war for the Spider-Verse had begun, and now the Spider-Man of 2099 was part of it. To hide from Morlun and the Inheritors, spiders from across reality gathered on Earth-13, including Miguel, Spider-Gwen, Spider-Woman of the main Marvel Universe, and the original Peter Parker. And Spider-Ham. Miguel was pretty close with Spider-Ham, the talking pig with spider powers. Miguel went with Peter and several other spiders to recruit another team of spider heroes that had been gathering separately. They were shocked to discover that this group was led by Otto Octavius, the superior Spider-Man who had briefly vanished following the destruction of Horizon Labs. When Miguel looked around, he discovered that they were in his world, the year 2099. After Octavius killed one of the inheritors who attacked, they were surprised by the rest of the family and a clone of the murdered vampire. In the assault, Miguel, along with steampunk Lady Spider and the six-armed Spider-Man, took the dead body and ran, hoping to study it for potential weaknesses. The trio regrouped at Miguel's apartment when they ran into his brother Gabriel. While they strategized, the monstrous inheritor Demos attacked and murdered the six-armed Spider-Man. The remaining two led Deimos to Alchemax, where they trapped him in a stasis field to stop his rampage. With Deimos stalled, Miguel was able to discover that the Inheritors were vulnerable to radiation. When he and Lady Spider returned to the safe zone, they discovered it had been invaded and countless Spider-Men were dead. But they also discovered the wreckage of Leo Pardon, the giant mech that belonged to the Spider-Man of the live-action Japanese television series. Together, the two rebuilt the robot and added radiation-based weapons to it, hoping to help turn the tide for the spiders. The giant robot arrived to help in the final battle, and the Inheritors were ultimately defeated with the various spider people free to return to their own universes and proper timelines. But by now, you should know that things are never so easy for the Spider-Man of 2099. When he returned to his world, it was wrong. A desolate wasteland rolled over by the Maestro, a future evil version of the Hulk. Miguel ended up captured and placed in a cell with Strange 2099, who he had previously met in Mexico. With Strange's help, Spider-Man traveled back to the present day to try to solve whatever caused the future to go awry. 
All he had to work with was only the mention of Alchemix developing something with nuclear weapons. Once back in the present day, Spider-Man secretly cured his friend Tempest of her cancer with medicine he had brought back from 2099 while researching the Inheritors. However, he hadn't expected that the medicine side effects would turn his friend into a horrifying monster. Trying to reach Tempest, Spider-Man revealed his identity, which helped temporarily shock her long enough for Miguel to escape and for her mutation to wear off. Months later, Miguel had hung up the costume and was trying to live a normal life in order to be there for his new girlfriend, Tempest, in a way he was never able to do for Dana or Xena. He accepted a job as the head of research and development for Peter Parker's company, Parker Industries, and was enjoying using his powers for lower stakes affairs like winning American Ninja Warrior. He had not given up trying to correct the timeline, however, and continued to keep tabs on Alchemix and tried to undermine them through corporate sabotage. He also kept a door to the future in his personal lab, where he would check in every day to see if things had changed, but unfortunately, they never did. Though he continued to protest, Peter Parker tried to encourage Miguel to use his powers, great power, and great responsibility and all that. Peter even created a new suit for Miguel that had various tech enhancements from his original costume, but Miguel had made a promise to Tempest that he would not continue putting his life on the line. Even from the start, Miguel wanted to live a normal life and found himself becoming a hero through happenstance. With a chance at something approaching happiness and with so many other heroes active in this version of New York, it was much easier to let go of the responsibility than it had been in the future. Things seemed to be going pretty well for Miguel, and though he was frustrated that he was not able to fix the future, he was feeling fulfilled in his relationship with Tempest. On a romantic evening out, Tempest revealed to Miguel she was pregnant. At the same time, however, a car sped through the window of the restaurant they were dining in and exploded. Both Miguel and Tempest were buried in the rubble, and though Miguel was able to survive only with minor injuries due to his powers, Tempest was in critical condition. While recovering in the hospital, Miguel was confronted by Tempest's mother, who told him her death was his fault. Miguel broke down in tears as his friends looked on helplessly. Using his resources at Parker Industries, Miguel discovered the car was driven by a robot and tracked the technology to a terrorist organization called The Fist. Miguel suited up and went looking for revenge. Miguel found out Tempest was in fact alive but was being hidden by her mother Lorraine, who Miguel discovered had killed her husband who was associated with the mob years ago. Upon hearing of this, Miguel flew into a violent rage, nearly killing a thug in order to track down Lorraine. Miguel has always had an angry streak that sometimes threatened his heroic career. When things got personal, he would become obsessive and fly into a rage, but this was the closest he had ever come directly to taking a life. Miguel was horrified by his actions and questioned whether he he was the good man he believed himself to be. It was a constant struggle for this Spider-Man in a way that it never was for Peter Parker. Miguel's background and arrogant attitude often meant Miguel was fighting his own violent instincts and frustrations. This inner conflict is one of the things that makes this Spider-Man so distinct from the original. His origin was not rooted in tragedy, but rather in his own ego and intelligence. Miguel ended up a hero more by accident than by plan, and every setback meant he would reevaluate his purpose. Miguel eventually pulled himself together and found Lorraine. When he confronted her, she surprised him by revealing she had superpowers. She blasted Miguel with pink energy beams from her hands. It was not going to be as easy as he had thought to get info from this old lady. Miguel managed to settle Lorraine down and discover that she had tried to hide Tempest away out of fear Tempest would develop the same uncontrollable power she had. Spider-Man warned Lorraine to stay away and left. But though she was alive, Tempest was still in a coma and recovery was uncertain. As usual, Miguel had no time to celebrate the discovery his girlfriend was alive, nor relax before everything went sideways, as he found himself transported back to 2099, but it had been changed again. The Fist had recruited several of Miguel's enemies and were experimenting with time travel. When he tracked them down, he was caught in a trap that sent him back to the future. But this world was not like any of the other versions. It had become a combination of medieval and future tech. Distracted by the changes, Miguel was subsequently captured by Venom and a new Dr. Octopus 2099. Miguel awoke in the clutches of the Goblin 2099, who explained that he was now at the mercy of the Sinister Six, who controlled all of Nueva York, including Alchemax. This Sinister Six 2099 included versions of Goblin, the Vulture, Dr. Octopus, Electro, Venom, and Sand One. 
Miguel tried to explain that this was not the way the future was supposed to be. Needless to say, the villains did not like hearing their victory and control was the wrong future. Just as they were about to kill Spider-Man, they were stopped by the arrival of Dormammu, the evil fire demon. In truth, it was an illusion by the girlfriend of Gabriel, Miguel's brother, who arrived in a high-tech suit to save Spider-Man. With the aid of the goblin, she had been tipped off on Spidey's arrival. The rest of the six discovered that the goblin was a traitor and used her as bait to get Spider-Man back. Miguel teamed up with his brother Gabriel, whose mind had been plugged into virtual reality while his body withered away, to mount a rescue and get rid of the six once and for all. With Lila's help reaching out to the past, they launched a plan that spanned nearly a century. With the knowledge that the Fist Terrorist Organization was responsible for this new future, Miguel's revenge and quest to set his world right were aligned. With the aid of Gabriel's hollow projector tech, Spider-Man confused the villains by projecting hundreds of images of himself to overwhelm them. Spider-Man managed to rescue the goblin and escape with her. He planned to take her back to the present, but when they stepped through the time portal, she was grabbed by Dr. Octopus and murdered. The portal closed and Miguel fell to his knees and vowed revenge once again for the murder of yet another friend. And you thought Peter Parker's Spider-Man had it rough. After encountering the ninja assassin Elektra, Miguel discovered the Fist was an extremist offshoot of the ninja clan known as the Hand, and they were set on the destruction of the United States. Spider-Man and his allies assaulted the Fist base and ended their plan to overthrow the US with an army of genetically modified lizard people. Meanwhile, Miguel's father, Tyler Stone, mysteriously arrived in the past and approached Tempest, who had awakened from her coma but was paralyzed from the waist down. Tyler promised he could heal her injuries if she came with him. Tempest didn't trust Stone, but she wanted to be there fully for her future baby, who had been unharmed in the initial attack. Tempest accepted Stone's offer and went with him while Miguel tried to fight his way to her. However, Miguel was unsuccessful in rescuing Tempest. After another trip to the future to avert the death of an ally, Miguel learned that the most recent change to the future, the one ruled by the Sinister Six, was the direct result of a biological attack by the Fist, who were secretly led by Miguel's father. Miguel captured the time-displaced Electro 2019 and tricked the villain into revealing the exact time and date of the virus. Miguel jumped forward in time and with the help of Tempest, now a superhero named Honeybee, and their adult time-traveling son Gabri, they stopped Tyler Stone from releasing the virus. During the fight, Miguel discovered that it was his fate to die in the past when rescuing Tempest from his father. Desperate to set 2099 back to its rightful status, Miguel traveled through time for what he believed would be his final adventure. When Spider-Man got to Tempest, he saw that she had already been transformed again into the same mutant creature she had changed into after receiving her cancer cure that she would learn to control in the future. The two long-separated lovers were finally reunited after so much hardship. Happily ever after. Yeah, right. You surely see the pattern by now. Miguel did not even have the time to consider the possibilities of a potential future together. Immediately after the two embraced, Tempest stabbed Miguel through the chest, mortally wounding him. Tempest had been programmed by Stone to kill Spider-Man, and Miguel had lost her as soon as they kissed. Tempest snapped out of her haze without any idea of what happened, just seeing the love of her life bleeding on the floor in front of her. As Miguel lay dying in her arms, it was clear to him that she had no memory of the attack. Miguel assured her that he loved her, and always would. It seemed like the end, but Miguel awoke back in the year of 2099, now back to the way it should be, thanks to Gabriel and Doctor Strange's magic. There was one catch, though. He could never go back and see Tempest. The future required her to believe him dead. Having arrived back in 2099 on New Year's Eve, Miguel looked ahead at the 22nd century with a new lease on life. Of course, the future is always changing, and Miguel had to travel back one more time to keep his time from being erased. Forcibly ejected into the past, Miguel tried to warn Peter Parker the future was dying, but was only briefly able to warn his old friend before he disappeared. Peter managed to avert the timeline disaster, and Miguel awoke somewhere on a beach. As he wandered around Lost, he stumbled upon a familiar face, Tempest, holding their son. Perhaps after all the grief and strife he experienced in his life, there was in fact a happy ending waiting for Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man 2099. Well, that about wraps it up for this video. I've been Morse Code, and you've been awesome. Thank you so much for watching this video of Plot Armor Comics, and please remember to subscribe to the channel for more comics history.